In this topic, we're going to have a look at nucleotides and ribonucleic acid, RNA. So by the end of this topic, you should be able to answer the questions, what are nucleic acids? What is the structure of a nucleotide? What are the different nitrogenous bases? How are polynucleotides formed? And finally, what are the different types of RNA? Now, nucleotides are your basic units, as you can see by, represented by the red highlighted boxes. And they make up a group of the most important chemicals in all organisms. These are the nucleic acids, DNA, as you can see on the right, and RNA on the left. Now, RNA is a chain of nucleotides joined together, it's a single chain, whilst DNA is two chains joined together. So we said that DNA is a double helix. Let's have a look at the structure of a nucleotide. Now, individual nucleotides are made up of three components. You've got a pentose sugar, which can be two types, ribose, which you find in RNA, and deoxyribose, which you find in DNA, a phosphate group, and a nitrogenous base. And the nitrogenous base can be one of five different bases, which we'll have a look in a little bit. So here you can see all the different elements that make up a nucleotide. In the sugar, if the R group is OH, you find it in RNA, so it's ribose. If the R group is hydrogen, this is what you find in DNA. Hence you get the name deoxyribonucleic acid, which means the oxygen is missing. Okay, let's look at the different nitrogenous bases. There's two groups of bases. You've got the purines and the pyrimidines. Notice how the purines are made of two ring structures, whilst the pyrimidine is only one ring structure. So an easy way to remember the difference is that purines look like a cat, where the one ring structure represents the head, and cats purr. So your purines are adenine and guanine, and your pyrimidines are thymine, cytosine, and uracil. Now uracil you only find in RNA, and thymine you only find in DNA. So here you can see the chemical structures of the nitrogenous bases. So notice how adenine and guanine are made up of two ring structures. Cytosine, thymine, and uracil are only one ring structure. Also have a look at how similar uracil and thymine are. Do you remember where you find uracil? In RNA and thymine in DNA. So how are polynucleotides formed? Well, the phosphate group, pentose sugar, and nitrogenous base combine together by a condensation reaction. This is going to form a mononucleotide. So a mononucleotide can join with another mononucleotide to form a dinucleotide, and then a polynucleotide by condensation reactions. So here you can see a condensation reaction. So notice how water is being removed. So this occurs between the 5' prime carbon of one unit and the 3' prime carbon of the next unit. And the resulting bond is a covalent bond, which we call a phosphodiester link or phosphodiester bridge. So here you can see the phosphodiester link between two nucleotides and how to represent it diagrammatically. So what's the structure of RNA? Well, RNA is a single-stranded polynucleotide, and the pentose sugar is always ribose. The nitrogenous bases can be adenine, guanine, cytosine, or uracil. You never see thymine in RNA. So you've got three different types of RNA. Messenger RNA, ribosomal RNA, and transfer RNA. 
Let's have a look at messenger RNA first of all. Now, messenger RNA consists of thousands of mononucleotides forming a long single strand and is formed by transcription of a section of DNA, as you can see in this diagram here. The mRNA is tr being transcribed. Now, you need an enzyme called RNA polymerase, and the mRNA is complementary to the DNA template strand, so the sequence on the DNA template strand. And it carries the code for the amino acid sequence. So here you can see how mRNA is made in the nucleus. And then it travels to the cytoplasm where tRNA is going to bind to it. So its structure is suited to its function because it possesses the correct sequence of many triplets of nitrogenous bases which we call codons. And these codons code for amino acids. Now, messenger RNA is also easily broken down. So it exists only for as long as it's needed to manufacture a given protein. Now, messenger RNA is made in the 5' prime to 3' prime direction, which means that new nucleotides are added to the 3' prime of the chain. Okay, let's have a look at ribosomal RNA. Now, ribosomal RNA is a large complex molecule which makes up about 80% of RNA. So it has a sequence of organic bases which is very similar in all organisms. It's made in the nucleolus and then it associates with proteins in the cytoplasm to form ribosomes. And they form the site of translation. So here you can see a computer-generated image of ribosomal RNA. And then finally you've got transfer RNA. Now transfer RNA is a relatively small molecule and it's made up of around 80 nucleotides. So it's a single strand that has been folded into this clover leaf shape. Notice how one end, that top end, one of the um, ends of the chain is extending beyond the other. So the extended chain always has the nitrogenous base sequence, cytosine, cytosine, adenine. And this is where amino acids attach. So important points to remember about tRNA. It's a long chain of about 80 nucleotides, and it's been folded into this clover leaf shape. The acceptor stem at the top there attaches to amino acids. And then the anticodon at the bottom, which we'll discuss in a moment, binds to the codon on the mRNA. Now during protein synthesis, the anticodon at the bottom binds to the complementary codon on the mRNA during protein synthesis. Which I've just mentioned. <laughs> so the tRNA anticodon binds to the codon in the mRNA, and the tRNA is suited to its role for lining up amino acids on the mRNA because it's got this anticodon on the bottom, and then it's got this acceptor arm at the top that attaches to an amino acid. Right in summary, we looked at what are nucleic acids. These are polymers of nucleotides. And the structure of a nucleotide is a nitrogenous base, pentose sugar, and phosphate group. The different nitrogenous bases that you get are purines and pyrimidines. Can you remember the two purines? adenine and guanine. And then your three different pyrimidines are cytosine, thymine, and uracil. So how are polynucleotides formed? These are formed by condensation reactions. The covalent bond is called a 
phosphodiester link. And finally, what are the different types of RNA? You've got messenger RNA, transfer RNA, and ribosomal RNA. So you should remember the, these different structures. And that concludes our lesson, the end.